All right, hello folks. Welcome to the first Straight Up Hangout. My name is Ben Prezik from Barrel Strength Design, joined by Brandon Kelly and Luke Holder from Pixel and Tonic. Uh, the topic today is Introduction to Craft Commerce, and we've got Luke Holder, lead developer of Craft Commerce here, who's going to be giving us a tour of the product. If you haven't had a chance yet, uh, Craft Commerce is a beautiful product, just a few months on the market, but already has people raving and a lot of agencies shifting all of their e-commerce work to the platform. It, I encourage you to download it. It's, it's really beautiful, well-crafted product and we look forward to learning more about it today. So with that said, uh, I will re-mention to those who just joined, there is a Q&A application, so if you have questions as this event proceeds, feel free to post questions in the Hangout on air, and we'll be asking Luke those questions, or as many that we can get to a bit later. With that said, I'm going to hand things off to you, Luke, and let, let you lead the way. Okay, thank you very much, Ben. I am coming from you uh, to you from uh, Perth, Western Australia, so... Uh, we're hoping that the uh, internet pipes hold together and uh, I can get uh, this presentation over to you guys. So what I'm going to do is share my screen, if I can work that out, so you don't have to look at my ugly mug for the next 30 or so minutes. And I believe that that should be working now. Ben, do you want to let me know that I, everyone can see my screen? Yep, we can see your screen. Great. Okay, so uh, Craft Commerce is a uh, plugin for Craft CMS, and it's a first-party plugin, meaning uh, it's made by Pixel and Tonic, uh, the same people who made Craft, um, and it's uh, their first kind of major um, plugin um, that they're supporting and. Uh, it's been in the works now for uh, just over a year, and it's been uh, publicly available in a, a 1.0 since uh, last November, uh, this recent November. And so we thought it would be great to just give people an overview of Craft and from, from the get-go, meaning installation, setting up a couple of products, uh, creating an order, see how you manage orders, um, and then we're happy to field some questions and then maybe going forward in some future uh, Straight Up Craft Hangouts, we can um, see what people are more interested in learning about with Craft Commerce and we can um, tailor some more uh, Hangouts towards those topics. So obviously it's a, it's a fairly large plugin. There's a lot to it. I'm not going to be able to cover everything in this presentation, um, but we'll see, see how we go with time. Okay, so Craft uh, Commerce, as I said, is a plugin. I'm going to go ahead and install it, just as you would any other Craft plugin. Um, you'll notice here it's version one, um, but there's been a few uh, releases since then. As soon as I install it, you can see Commerce is available in your sidebar, and we have uh, four main sub-navigation areas. We have our orders. This is where you would manage the orders, or this is where your clients would manage their orders. Uh, we have the products area where you can manage the products, promotions where you would manage sales and discounts, and then we have our settings area. To start off with, I'm going to um, explain a little bit about products. So I'm going to go into the settings, and I'm going to go to something we call product types. Now, if you're familiar with craft, you may be familiar with entries. Um, that's kind of like the uh, standard kind of place that you would enter most of your data. Um, you would have uh, sections in your entries, and those sections let you have different custom fields, uh, different you know, data layouts for different types of um, entries that you have. And the same goes for our products. We have something called product types. And product types let you define kind of the rules and the, the data structure of your products. So for example, um, when you install Craft Commerce for the first time, we give you an example product type, and and that product type is clothing. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up a new product type, and I'm going to call this one shoes. Our store sells some clothing and some shoes. So I've given this product type a name. Um, this product type has dimensions, so it has weight, 
um, weight fields and dimension fields. Um, and also this product type has multiple variants. That's one of the, the main kind of options for a product type. Um, products could be a, just a single product or a basic product, or some products can have multiple variants. Um, so for example, you might have a red shoe or a blue shoe, and we're going to show you how that works. So I'm going to say our shoes have multiple variants, um, and I'm going to say that uh, we want to see the title field for each of those variants. And with this product type, we can also decide uh, the URL structure of accessing this product, uh, the products of this type. So th this is, for those familiar with Craft, this is just the same as entry sections. You can control the uh, URL structures for your entries. Um, and in this case, you would control the URL structures of your products. Now you'll see, as I was uh, saying that this product had multiple, this product type had multiple variants, we have a, a tab up here for the products fields. And when I enable multiple variants, I also have the ability to have multiple uh, custom fields for the variant. So I'm going to jump up here and say that this product has some content, it has a body. Uh, it has some related products and has some tags. And then I'm going to jump over to the variant um, and I'm going to say that this variant, the only thing I'm really wanting to, to add to this variant is some tags to um, define it. But you could have any other type of custom field here. You could have a categories, craft categories, uh, drop down boxes, um, any type of field that could define your variants or your products. So I'm going to save this product type now. So now I have a clothing and shoes. And you can see that this product type has variants, but our clothing product type that came um, default installed does not. So let's jump over to our products now. And just like uh, entries, you can see the different product types along the side, and you can filter them. We have three default uh, clothing products that we've installed when you install Commerce. And if I click on shoes, we can see we don't have any. So I'm going to go create a new shoe. This screen will look familiar. This is looks uh, just like a craft entry screen. Um, and so I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to make some Reebok pumps for those that know. Remember those? I think they're back on the market now. And here are the custom fields that I defined at the product level. Uh, for this product type. And then down here are the variants. Um, and so like I mentioned, you can have multiple variants. So I'm going to have uh, a title for this first one. I'm going to say red pumps. Maybe the SKU is red pump. Price is $99.99. It has unlimited stock. Um, you could also set the minimum number of order, uh, items that should be ordered or a maximum number. Here are our dimension fields, because I said this product has dimensions. Um, here is where we would put in uh, that, st that uh, weight or sizes, and if, obviously if we turn that off, these fields wouldn't be there. Tags, custom field that we added to the variance field layout. So I'm just going to say there's a tag of red, uh, so that we could in the future search these variants by their tags. And I'm going to add another variant. And I'm going to make a blue blue pumps. And we're going to say blue pump. So these are going to be more expensive. Let's stop. And then a new tag of blue. Okay, so um, we now have two variants. You can see here these variant um, boxes look very familiar for those that know craft. Um, they're just like matrix. You could think of them as similar to matrix uh, boxes in that they work the same way. You can drag and drop them. You can reorder them. Um, we also have a flag here to say that this is the default variant for this product, um, as well as uh, disabling, collapsing, etc. So it makes it easy to manage uh, if you have a lot of variants. Along the right-hand side, we have uh, a tax system, so you can say whether this product is in a certain tax category, um, whether it has free shipping, and whether it's allowed to be affected by the promotions. 
uh, sales and discounts. So let's save that. So now if I go to all products, I have seen my three clothing products, my one shoe product. Um, let me just jump into the clothing products. You'll remember from earlier that the product type did not have variants. Um, and that's why you can't see a variance uh, boxes down here. Um, because this product type did not have multiple variants, um, we have kind of the base variant fields here uh, on the right hand side in the in the products um, sidebar. And you could think of this as the default variant. So this product has a single variant. Um, and so all products have to have at least one variant, whether that's uh, a product type that has no variants, there's still a, a single variant there. Or uh, if a product type has multiple variants, then you'd, have, you'd see like the availability on this side to create multiple variants. Um, okay, so let's see how that looks. Uh, Craft Commerce comes with uh, some default example templates. Uh, so I'm going to jump over to those now. Uh, and I'm going to click on products and here we see our three products and here was that new uh, product that we created with the two different variants so the customer could choose the variant that they wanted to add to the cart. Now remember that just like craft there's no um, uh, there's no rules about how this UI needs to look this is completely customizable by uh, your designer developer um, this is just our example template so if you wanted to have uh, radio boxes or check boxes or you just wanted to have two different buttons for each variant to add them to cart, uh, you can do that. Uh, this is just our example templates and so it's, it has to be kind of fairly um, basic and flexible. Um, you can see I just added that item to the cart and you can see that there. What I'm going to do um, is I'm going to jump over to the code now that shows us how we listed these products. Um, and doing that because I wanted to show how easy it is, uh, how familiar it is to uh, to find products with your Twig templating language uh, just like craft products. So we can see here we have a, our for loop for our products. Um, in this case uh, just like entries we, we would say craft dot and in the case of entries you'd say craft dot entries but since we're working inside a commerce um, plugin, we're going to do craft.commerce.products. Um, and then in this case, I'm saying limit to five, just so that it's uh, if someone goes and adds a lot of products, we uh, are still optimized in the example. But just uh, like any um, uh, entry uh, finding tag element criteria model, uh, we can do all sorts of things here to limit the types of products we want returned. Um, we could say we want um, just the first product in the list or we could say the uh, type is the uh, type is shoes and that should hopefully return if I've got the, the spelling right that's just returning the uh, shoes uh, product types um, so if you're not familiar with uh, craft itself this is a fairly standard way of finding things in the system and so it feels familiar because products are just like entries in that they're a core uh, craft element in the system. So in this case we're looping through, I'm going to get rid of that condition there. We're looping through all of our products, we're outputting some titles uh, and then I've just added some comments in here and then we've got a basic very basic form tag uh, and that form tag uh, is wrapped around this button here and this uh, select box and it's hitting the update cart uh, form action. So we have a single form action that does a whole bunch of things to allow you to interact with the cart. It can add a purchasable or a product to the cart um, it can update the cart's address, it, it can update the guest email of, of the guest user, it can add the coupon code, it can choose the shipping method, the payment method, um, it can also update custom fields on the order and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, and then the only other uh, endpoint that we have that I'll show you 
in a moment is the actual completion of the cart and the payment, which needs to be a separate uh, action because um, we have some other considerations for security for submitting credit card payments. Um, so this form here that we see here is saying that after it submits, it's going to redirect to the cart. We're just going to add one. Uh, we've, we've got a hidden input for the quantity of one. Uh, and then what we're doing is looping over each of the product's variants. And what we're doing is if there's enough stock, we're allowing it to be selected. And then we're passing in the variant's purchasable ID uh, to the cart. And then we're adding it to the cart. So I'll do that again now. And here we have two products now in our cart. Now our example templates are obviously not uh, the way you would design things. Um, we're showing all of the different uh, types of data that you can get uh, and show for the line item. Uh, some of the features of our cart are um, a note field. So somebody could uh, add, uh, please uh, make it good. They could update the quantity. Uh, and then another feature of our cart line items is uh, we have something called options. And this is user submitted data that allows um, you to have the user, sub, uh, the customer add any type of like optional um, flags or data or information about this line item. And so in this case, this is just our example. Um, we've said this is a gift. So if they tick that and they updated the line item, we can see it just jumped down down here. So we can now see that the data, this is just uh, JSON encoded data associated with this line item, uh, is now that we've recorded that they've selected that this is a gift. Uh, and this data is um, available to be seen in the back end when we look at the orders. Uh, but all of this, all the things you see here, so the coupon code updating, um, uh, as well as adding to cart, and then the screens I'm, I'm about to go through fairly quickly here, adding a address. I'm just going to make up the address. Is that right? So I'm submitting uh, an address. You can see we've kind of divided up our, check our example checkout into multiple steps. But like I just mentioned, this is all, this button here, confirming address, is using the same form action to update the cart um, with all of the different pieces of data. So I've just selected the address. Uh, now it's showing the shipping page. Uh, we have a free shipping option, but there may be other shipping methods that you've set up in your system. And these are dependent on what uh, maybe the address that the uh, person submitted for their shipping address. So let's choose that. And I'm just doing this, going through this and submitting an order uh, for the purpose of showing you how to manage orders in the back end. Okay, so the payment method, um, we've only got the one dummy payment method because uh, we're just using the trial version of Craft Commerce. Um, and that might be a good point to just remind you, you can go to craftcommerce.com and download the plugin uh, with its full functionality with the only lim limitation being you can only process dummy credit card transactions. Uh, so let's add our credit card details, obviously not my credit card number, and let's buy this order. And we can see our confirmation screen. Uh, we have a PDF generator that you can create your own PDF templates so they could download their PDF. Let's jump back into the back end now. So we set up our products. We just went to the front end um, example templates and we added a couple of products to the cart and then we checked out uh, with the dummy gateway. Uh, let's go over to our orders now. Uh, we can see a very similar screen again to our products. It feels very familiar. Uh, we have along the side, the different um, order statuses that we uh, give you as a default, which you can change. Uh, we've set it up so that as soon as you receive an order, it gets the status of processing. Um, and 
we also allow you to see the active and inactive carts. And so we're excited about um, in the future doing adding features that relate to um, helping customers recover their cart um, as well as uh, sending promotional offers to people that have inactive carts. So if we jump down to, if I jump back over to uh, my front end and I'm just going to add something else to the cart. So I've created another cart. If I go down to active carts, I can see the active cart that I've got here, the $20 value cart, in my active carts. And then after 30 or so days, um, which is configurable, you can have that show up in your inactive carts. Um, so let's, there's that one I just created, but I haven't completed it. So you can see there's no status, there's no date completed, um, and there's also no payment columns there. But if I jump over to the processing, uh, here we see the order number, the unique order number, the status, the total of the order, when it was ordered, uh, the amount paid, and when it was paid. Uh, and so let's go in and have a look at that order. We have our information in the top left. We have our address information for this order. Uh, here we see the line items. So there's the two products that the person ordered. Here's the note that I made on one of the uh, line items. Uh, you can see additional information with the breakdown of the cost uh, for things like tax, whether there was a discount applied, uh, the shipping cost for that item. And then you can also see on the left here, if you remember, one of the products, uh, one of the line items, I added the option for a gift. And so we've, you can see all of that kind of uh, data that the user customer has submitted along with this line item. Okay, so um, this is kind of the, uh, the order itself. Uh, and then we have a download PDF button, which will download this order as a PDF. You can create your own templates for the customer's receipt or the customer's PDF versus the administrator's PDF. So this PDF here you could configure maybe to be uh, a packing slip, um, whereas the PDF that the customer downloads could be a, a proper receipt or an invoice. We have the ability to delete the orders. And then down here we have the order status history. So this is the uh, status of the order over time as it's moved through uh, a workflow that you've created. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. Uh, where are we at with time? Okay. And then down the bottom here we have our transactions. So we have our successful purchase transaction on our dummy uh, gateway. And we can also see additional information about that transaction here. Um, I'm going to now go to our settings again. And just like with product types, you could have custom fields. We also have the ability to have custom fields on the order itself. So if I, I don't have some good example fields, but you may have a field where you want the customer to submit some additional information with the order. And so if I jump over to our orders here, you can see here is our custom fields. So just like an entry or a product, you can have custom fields on your order. So some people may have like an additional option that isn't related to a particular item um, that they want the customer to submit, um, whether it's a pickup location or something like that. Um, you can collect any type of data that you want with the custom fields on the order. Um, Okay, let's go back out to the orders listing screen. Uh, I mentioned how we, it comes with two default order statuses. Uh, so an order status is just a, you could think of it as a custom um, uh, box for an order. So when an order gets created, it gets put into this processing box. Um, and then you could imagine that your clients who are processing these orders would uh, ship this product, they would confirm it's been paid, then they would uh, ship this product, so they may uh, click on the products, the sorry, the, not the products, the orders here, and then they would say update order status, and they would change this status to shipped, and they could leave a message on the order, so they could say shipped on the second of the second, or they could add a note saying to the customer, they could add any type of uh, note there. 
And so if I update this order's status, you can see it's disappeared from the processing area and it's gone into the shipped area. Um, so let's just quickly go and add another status to our order workflow. So I'm going to go into settings. I'm going to go into order statuses. You can see our processing status is the default status. Um, and then we have shipped. And let's add another one. Let's call this completed. And we're going to say that that's got a light gray status color. Uh, we have the ability to trigger emails when a status has been entered into. Uh, so, uh, for example, you may attach a, an email, set up an email in the system to email the customer when the order goes into the processing uh, order status, or you may have an automatic email that goes out to the customer when the status is shipped. Um, so let's, now that I've created the completed status, you can name these whatever you want or rename them at any time. An order can only exist in one status at a time. And you can move an order freely between statuses. So uh, I would imagine, you know, every month the, cut, the client may want to clear out all of their shipped orders or archive them. Uh, so again, they could move uh, more than one. Or if we go into this order, we can actually update the status here from inside the order. So um, let's say it's been moved into history. see now if we jump back out to our orders it's in the completed uh, status so uh, this gives you a lot of power to um, build a workflow that works for your client um, and there's it's a fairly uh, loose workflow uh, rules we don't have any rules you could you could move this um, order back into processing if you wanted or you may have a status called um, um, back order the products in this order are, are on back order um, and you can move them in and out of any status that you wish. Um, and so this gives you a lot of flexibility to create a workflow that works for the business that you're building this commerce solution for. And we also um, have a number of uh, events or hooks um, documented. So if you're a PHP developer and uh, you wanted to do a, a certain action when a, an order goes into a certain status, you could trigger that action um, through PHP. And so uh, we expect other plugins will be adding functionality to, to commerce itself um, and extending the, the features of commerce. OK, um, how are we going on time? We're at 5.35, OK. So I've talked about products. Uh, I've talked about product types and how you can set up kind of the data structure of your products. Um, and we've talked about orders and how we can set uh, order statuses, create order statuses for our orders to move through. Um, I'll move on to now promotions. Um, we have a promotion system where uh, you can set up sales or discounts. Um, the difference between a sale and a discount is a, a sale applies to the product before it's added to the cart. So you might put a group of products on sale um, and they will um, be on sale for uh, either everybody based on the conditions. They might be on sale for a certain time period um, and they might have a flat uh, dollars off or um, whatever currency you're using off or a percent off and that's what sales are. Discounts are a little bit different. Discounts only apply once they're in the cart. Uh, and just like sales, you have a bunch of conditions. So one of the conditions would be you need to have the, the customer supplier coupon code. Um, the coupon code also comes with some per user limits, total use limits, uh, has a, having a start and end date, as well as other kind of criteria. For example, you could say the discount only applies to uh, this particular product here. Uh, or they, that they need to purchase a minimum number of products to have this discount trigger. And you can have a, a discount off the whole order, which we call a base discount, a per item discount, as well as a percent discount. Uh, so let me just show you how that would 
work. So I'm going to say there's a coupon code and it's ABC. And I'm not going to put any other conditions on it other than the fact that it's going to be 10% uh, off. And I need to give it a name. So I'm going to say 10% off. And the description is going to be the same. And it's enabled, so you can enable and disable discounts. So if I jump over to our um, the active cart I've got going on here, if I go into the coupon box, just as you would expect, you can see uh, we have our regular line item, but additional what we call adjustments have been added to this order, and this adjustment is the discount in this case. Other adjustments could include uh, shipping costs or tax, um, so you can have um, lots of different types of adjustments as well as plugins could provide their own adjustments to, to trigger cost changes to the cart. Uh, and you can see that we've given this 10% or $2 off. Um, with the standard, uh, when you're logged in, uh, we do save the addresses if you're a user so that you can reuse uh, or have like an address book. Your customers can have an address book. Um, so I'm going to choose the same address I had previously. And actually, at this point, I'm going to show another feature. I hope I'm not jumping around too much here. But before I check out, I'm going to um, just show Actually, I'll leave that. We won't get into that. I was going to show emails, but I have just on my development environment. I won't. Um, I can't guarantee that the email is going to obviously trigger. I've got to, I haven't tested that. Um, so let's just finish this order. Okay, now. Okay, so I go to our orders, and we go into processing, and there's our new order. And you can see here's the discount line um, with its additional information, if there is any um, applied to the order. OK, one, one thing, um, so hopefully that's clear. Promotions are very flexible. You can have multiple discounts that can apply to a cart, one or more, as long as they meet the conditions. Um, and you can have sales. Uh, one of the great things that people are using is um, they're having, uh, sorry, the discounts. We're going to discounts. Oh, okay. Here we go. That's why. I'm going to create a user group. I'm going to call this members. So say in craft you had a certain user group that would, was, you know, maybe they were members, special members of your site. If we go into our uh, promotions and we create a new sale. Because I didn't have any user groups, they didn't. Uh, this field didn't show up. But you could say that this sale is only available to people that are members of your site. So you could give like a 10% discount to members of your website. It's a pretty cool feature. I'm uh, going to give it a. Enable that. So now this sale would apply to anyone that's viewing the products and they're logged in and they're a member of this uh, members group in your site. Okay, um, one thing I neglected to talk about and which is very powerful with craft commerce, and this gets to like why I love craft and why I um, began building craft commerce. And this is the power that um, and the flexibility that you have to model your content as well as deliver an experience to the customers that's um, really integrated to your actual website. So a lot of the time, a lot of commerce systems, you have a, uh, a website and then you have like a, a shop area. And you'll jump over to the shop and at most maybe you'll have um, the number of items in your cart when you're in the, the main website, but you still have to kind of be over in the shop side of the website to do all of the commerce related um, things. But the benefit of craft and the benefit of the way it's architected is that products 
are really in the system just like entries. Um, even though they're kind of in a different section of the control panel, they can work and do just about everything that entries do. Um, and anything that entries kind of in the future may get, uh, products could get also feature-wise. So one example um, I will show you. So if I go into the products and I jump into the Reebok pumps, you can see here I added a field called related products. Um, and so that's obviously a handy feature that we know that Craft has a really powerful um, relationship engine. So I could say that these three products are all you know, related and so obviously when the person checks out or adds this item to the cart, um, you could try and upsell them or sell the person on some additional product, products that they can add to their cart. So that's uh, relationships are really great there. But the other benefit is that inside your entries, if I go, uh, this is a, a default uh, basic installation of Craft Commerce. So I have just a news section that came um, by default. If I go into our news uh, section and I add that custom, uh, it's called related products here, but it might be called something else, whatever you name the field. If I add that to our news section and I'm over on the entry screen um, and I want to go and edit a, uh, a news entry, I, or, or for example, this might not be a news entry, it might be like a how-to guide or it might be... Um, uh, you know, if we've made, if we're selling Reebok pumps, it may be, um, you know, how to care for your Reebok pumps, an article, some great content, um, and so you could actually uh, relate this product directly into this article, um, and this is really great for your editors uh, and your, you know, your uh, clients who are building websites, is, big, uh, sorry, building the content is because uh, they can create products and they can you know, relate products really natively inside of their entries. So products end up being really well integrated with the site itself. Um, and as, of course, if you had like the powerful matrix field that comes with craft, um, you could embed products really nicely into um, the page. So I'm just going to show you an example. If we click add a product and none of these products here are the ones we want, we can even add a new product clothing product right here without even jumping over to the commerce area. So I can, I can say that these are Nike Airs. I'm going to give it a price. Fill everything else in. So I've just created a new, and I've just uh, typoed that, that's all right. I can double click on that and edit it. And so I've just added a product, uh, a, a new product, directly into this entry. Um, and so this lets us, let's, you know, as a designer and a developer of a website, lets you do some pretty um, awesome stuff. Um, there's a, an example of, this is a craft commerce website. I'm hoping my internet's going to be working. And so uh, this is a Tasmanian Truffles. It happens to be an Australian um, agency that built this. Um, and so they have a, a home page. Uh, and on that home page, which maybe in craft it would have been a, uh, a single entry or a, for, for the home page, or it, you know, it could be any type of content that is defining this home page, they're able to embed their products really nicely inside of the home page. Um, and this, you know, in the past and looking at other commerce systems, something as simple as this, um, you know, people would be copying and pasting some JavaScript snippets um, from their commerce system just so that they can have like an add to cart button directly on their home page. So you can see here they've got a nice Ajax, um, they're using Ajax to add the items to the cart. They've got a nice little slide out and I'll just give you a little demo of their checkout. They've kind of integrated a lot of the payment choice, shipping method, and address updating all into a single kind of form. Uh, so hopefully that gets across that one of the real benefits of uh, craft commerce 
and, and being built on craft is you've got this really powerful, flexible way of kind of defining your content and setting up your content, and your products are really a part of your website and your content. They're not sitting in a separate bucket somewhere else uh, on the side of your site. Um, and customers and, and clients really can see that that's a benefit for selling. Um, when you can have some really great content um, talking about something and then you know, a call to action to add something to the cart in the page and you have all the full power of templating and accessing all of that commerce information inside your uh, craft website, it's, it really is powerful. I'm just going to check in now with uh, our Hangout and just see how I'm going on time. How are we going, Ben? We're about 45 minutes in, Luke. So. Okay, did, has anyone uh, pasted any questions? Uh, we I've got to have through a bunch of things. Brad Bell is curious about your beard. And it's, uh, but we don't have other questions. I'll encourage other people to start right. uh, posting. Yeah, it might be good if they start posting. I, have a few I could go into more. Um, we could talk about shipping. We can talk about tax. Um, there's a lot of things that we could go into, um, but we hopefully hopefully we can do a few more of these um, going forward, so we can get into some kind of deep deep dive topics. Let me start with a question. Um, in the middle of your presentation, you referenced the concept purchasable, and I think that's a pretty core concept to the commerce product. But you didn't go into much detail of of what it means or how powerful it is. Um, could you explain why why Products or services or things in craft commerce are called purchasable purchasables, not not anything else. And and what type of um, flexibility sure. that gives the system? Yeah, sure. Okay, so um, I suppose a, a good analogy is how craft is architected itself, right? You have something called entries in in the system, um, but you also have other things like categories and users. And all of those things, categories, users, entries, they're all called elements. And so elements is not something that you kind of hear often when you're talking about craft, but that's the underlying kind of objects. They're all elements of the system. And that's what gives you the power to do relationships with um, each other. So you can have a, a relationship between an entry and a user or category and an entry. Because there's that central underlying kind of element, uh, it allows um, some really um, great capabilities. So what we've done is in craft commerce is we've um, enhanced uh, elements in a way to allow them to be purchasable. So um, for example, if you create a plugin that provides a new element to the system, and so an example of a plugin that provides an element could be uh, like there's a couple of uh, calendar plugins. Uh, I think I won't name them, but there's uh, you know if someone created a calendar plugin. Maybe each event on that calendar is a element in craft. So that com that would give you all the benefits of being able to link a calendar entry uh, event to an entry, etc. But what if, for example, you wanted to sell that calendar event? Well we give uh, developers the power to um, extend their elements that they create for craft and make them purchasable. So that's where we get the purchasable uh, name from. And so with commerce, the, the core commerce product, we have a single purchasable in the system and that is a variant. So uh, if we go into this product, this product here has a single default variant that can be bought, and that's the kind of the information down here. Whereas uh, this, uh, the shoes here, have two variants, so there's two purchasables. Uh, so developers that um, are building plugins can actually introduce new types of purchasables um, that you could offer to sell. And so you can see how these kind of products or these purchasables here, they're very much designed for things exactly like the example we had here with the Tasmanian truffles. They're, they're physical products, they have an SKU, they have um, you know, a weight, they have uh, you know, usually a set price, they don't have 
a dynamic price um, for them. Um, but we have the ability for somebody to create, uh, someone that can create their own custom purchasable um, and that could have a dynamic price. Um, so someone could build a purchasable, for example, that's like a builder bike. So they, someone might click a bunch of options to add their, their things to a bike and they'd create a purchasable and that purchasable can be added to the cart. So our cart can, can support not just um, these um, variants, but it can also support third-party purchasables. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's, it gets to a little bit of a developer-focused um, aspect, um, but it's something good to know about, that you don't add just a product to the cart, you add a purchasable. Yeah, if, it would help, if it would help, I can supply a real-world example of this. Yeah. Um, sure. Maybe I'll share my screen real quick. Yeah, let me turn mine off. So if you guys can see my screen right now, this is an example purchasable class. Um, this is actually from craftcms.com. Uh, when you buy Craft uh, Pro or Client or even Craft Commerce uh, itself, we're, we've migrated our entire store over to Craft Commerce. Uh, and so we've, we've built a couple different purchasable classes. This one's the CMS upgrade class. Uh, if you've ever written an element type before, it's mostly pretty similar to that. Um, there's there's an element type class, which is just kind of the standard element type stuff. Uh, and then there's the, the model class, and everything you see here is uh, pretty much there to implement this uh, this purchasable interface in PHP. So, you know, it's... It's uh, you know it's it's really not very complicated if you already understand how element types work. Uh, the only thing you really need to do is add like get purchasable ID. Get snapshot is a way to uh, get in get a snapshot of something that someone's buying at the time that they purchase it. Uh, in case in case the purchasable ever goes away uh, down the road, the order can still kind of have a rough idea of what what the customer purchased, what price they purchased it for, stuff like that. Uh, you define the price, the SKU, description, whether it's promotable or not, tax category ID, uh, and then you can you have an option to validate uh, line items as they're get, as they're getting added to your order, uh, and you can define whether they have free shipping. So that's that's kind of the interface as it is right now. Um, this class is invoked every time anyone buys Craft Client or Craft Pro, um, and yeah, I'd show you. Well, let's see. I guess I can show you the database as well. So we've got this. Uh, you know, in our back end, we've got this craft store CMS upgrades table. This defines all the elements uh, that are purchasable, and you know, there's some old legacy stuff in here as well. Uh, if you're if you started using Craft back in the 1.x days, you might recognize Publish Pro users, all that stuff. Um, and then, additionally, there's this uh, actual purchasables table that uh, creates a secondary index of all the different things that can be purchased. So, Very powerful concept there. So we have another question. If, is there anything else we'd like to say on purchasables right now, Luke or Brent? I was just going to quickly say um, that you know it, we, we've approached craft commerce the same way craft uh, was approached. Uh, it's very flexible for people to extend it, right? So we're looking forward to seeing what people build on craft commerce. Great. So the, actually, the next two questions relate to this. Um, and I'll let you choose, Luke, which which you'd like to dig into it <laughs> as to what what flows best. One is uh, how do you add a new payment gateway that isn't supported out of the box? And another is how flexible is the tax system? I have a client working with who's on Magento, and they sell alcohol online. I'd love to move them to Craft, but they have such custom needs for tax and shipping, including freight shipping. So. Those are both kind of how to extend craft commerce uh, questions. Yeah, 
we could. Um, I'm happy to answer both. Um, maybe maybe we could decide on, um, for example, the gateway one could be another future uh, hangout to show people how to create their own custom gateways. Um, we could we could pick that up but, again next week. We'll be doing another one of these folks next week. Yeah. So. yeah, sounds good. So uh, for both of those cases, um, we for first I'll talk about the gateways. Um, so craft. Let me just. Uh, Share my screen just a moment. And it's thinking. I don't know what's going on there. Just okay. Is that working? So uh, I've just gone into. Uh, the settings screen of Craft Commerce. Uh, I've gone to payment methods, and so um, I've just upgraded my uh, my installation of Craft Commerce to be um, the full license. So you can see we we support a number of gateways, and all of these gateways are um, the OmniPay uh, provided by the OmniPay uh, PHP package, which kind of gives us access to a lot of different gateways. And so um, people are, the person that asked that question is right, if I jump over here, um, someone may have an additional gateway that's not in this list. Uh, these are the first party ones that we kind of support from the OmniPay list. Um, but if you have a uh, OmniPay library that is out there on GitHub, um, you would just need to wrap that in a plugin um, and add that plugin to craft and then that would provide the um, the gateway in this list. So I do have an example, it's just out on my personal GitHub, there's an Ogone gateway, if I pronounce that right. And so if I just jump into that really quickly, um, it's, there's the standard kind of craft plugin class, and then what you're providing is called a gateway adapter. And all that gateway adapter is doing in this case um, is simply referencing the OmniPay um, gateway class and uh, this actual OmniPay gateway is you know, sitting inside of the, the source directory so or the vendor directory I think rather uh, source. So this I've just copied the OmniPay gateway for Ogone and wrapped it inside a gateway adapter plugin um, and so this plugin now can be added to craft and when you add that um, Actually, the one method that you'll need if you're a developer, uh, there's a, a uh, function here called register gateway adapters. And you can say, obviously I'm saying if commerce is installed, then it's going to load up that gateways class and then return the, the gateway adapter class um, to craft commerce. And that's how you expose your OmniPay gateways to um, the craft commerce system. So we can probably do a deep dive on that um, later, but yeah, that's the basics. You wrap an OmniPay gateway in a plugin, um, a very basic plugin. It doesn't have to have any settings or features, um, and you can make that available to craft commerce. So hopefully yeah. that answers the, that question. In your example there, you were extending another OmniPay gateway that somebody had written. Um, yeah, what happens yes. if the gateway that somebody wants to support isn't available as an OmniPay gateway? Do they have to first make an OmniPay gateway, or would they just develop yeah, directly? Sorry, yes. yes. So if, say, um, if I had a gateway that my client was requesting, the first thing I would do is search for it. So if someone wanted an, I, like there's an ideal as a, as a gateway that's um, well known, and it may not be in the default list. So I've just Googled OmniPay ideal, and here it is. Um, this is the gateway code, and so this is what you would wrap in your plugin. But of course, if the gateway did not exist, then you would need to create an OmniPay gateway for your gateway. And you can do that by um, looking at the documentation for OmniPay. So this is talking about how you build your own um, driver, as they call it, for um, the gateway that you're building. So once you've built that, and, and the benefit of this is this: if you build the OmniPay gateway first, um, you know, other developers with other commerce systems can contribute and you can work on it together um, and then all you're doing is wrapping this inside a craft plugin to expose it to craft commerce. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Yes. Um, and what was the other question? Sorry, remind me. It was on. The other question was on taxes. Okay. Uh, how? Uh, so custom needs for custom tax shipping, including freight shipping. So I guess it was taxes and shipping, and how flexible extending those are. And if you yeah. want to push this to next week, Luke, and just focus on taxes and shipping and stuff. I'll, more. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just just do a quick overview. I won't go into it, but. Um, we, we have a as flexible a system um, as we can kind of build without being you know, tax experts around from around the world um, with different types of rules. Um, we have uh, a way to categorize your products themselves with tax categories um, and then we have tax zones which define an, a geographic location and then the categories and zones together make a uh, you can make a rate that applies to um, a combination of that zone and category. And so uh, the rates at the moment will apply to the products, um, individual products. They add the, the tax to the line item. We support included tax, so tax that's included in the price that you're paying. Um, but like any tax system, uh, we've made it as flexible as we can. We knew, we knew that we can't support you know, every type of um, jurisdiction's tax rules. So it is extendable. Um, you can provide your own tax rates um, through PHP and inside that you can put any of your own custom logic uh, including we expect in the future someone might release uh, a plugin or we might um, improve being able to have live um, rates look up to a third party API etc. Uh, so right now the, the rates, the tax system we have, you would input the rates manually um, and set up the configuration for those rates um, but in of course, a developer could extend that and add any other type of logic that they wanted to. And the same goes for shipping. Um, you have a bunch of shipping methods, um, and they have uh, a bunch of shipping rules. So um, this shipping method is has a shipping rule of free for all countries, uh, all locations. Um, but you can create a bunch of rules to do with shipping calculations based on weight, and um, I shall just show you quickly. You could um, base the shipping costs on the order prices or the, the total quantity, and you can calculate the rates for the shipping based on a per item rate or a weight rate, um, etc. Um, and again, all of this, even though you can define, it, you know, it's fairly flexible to be able to de define many different types of um, calculations for shipping. Um, there may be cases where a developer will need to build some, you know, write some custom PHP code to provide some additional um, shipping methods and shipping rates. And those could include um, being able to look up live rates from a, a, a third-party provider, postal provider. Um, so we've, we've provided kind of, the, we've covered, I, I think, 80% you know, of the use case, um, and the, the remaining 20 would either be a plugin or a developer writing some code to, to do stuff. Um, and we expect in the future we'll see plugins coming out that will provide some of that additional functionality. But yeah, I can deep dive on, on creating that and actually you know, writing the PHP code to extend the shipping and tax system uh, in a later Hangout. Great. Great. All right, we're at about an hour of time here. And Luke, I'm going to mute you. I hear myself. Uh, we're at about an hour, so I guess, uh, oh, I see one more question. Oh, it's just a qualification on the. All right, yeah, it's. All right, we'll um, we'll let's uh, if we don't have any more questions, let's wrap up. And um, Luke is going to be joining us next week on Straight Up Hangouts as well to dive even deeper into craft commerce. So if you have a uh, uh, topics that you'd like to to have him touch base on, feel free to drop us a note or drop him a note, and and we can we can try to work him into what we'll be discussing. Uh, with that said, uh, Brandon, Luke, any closing thoughts? Mm, Brandon, just uh, thanks a lot for hosting this. This has been yeah. this has been fun. I'm looking forward to doing this on a regular basis. 
Yeah, it'll be fun to get into some. Um, if you know, if there's plugin developers out there, we can do some more sessions on actually, you know, building some plugins for Craft Commerce and extending it. I'm looking forward to that kind of stuff. But yeah, thanks a lot, Ben, for running this. All right, yeah. and we'll yeah we'll try to get any more comments that were just posted into the the next talk, folks. And uh, so this is the first straight up hangout. We're going to be trying to do this weekly. Um, topics are open-ended here. We're going to be picking from all that Craft has to offer. So if you have feedback or, or thoughts on what we can be discussing, feel free to drop us a note at, at, on our Straight Up Craft contact form or directly. And we'll consider what we can get on the books. So have a great day, everybody. Thanks for coming, Brandon, and thanks for leading the charge. Luke, beautiful product. Right. Hopefully they understood me. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Surely. Sure.